If you're a Unity developer, get ready to have your mind blown. Today I'm going to show you the coolest thing that I saw at GDC for Unity developers, something that I think every developer can and probably should use that won't hurt your workflow, will just speed things up and just make stuff a lot cooler as well. So let's get started by first talking about what the thing is and making sure that everybody knows it is not a code editor. So the tool I'm gonna to show you today is called Writer Flow. It's from JetBrains, who actually sponsors our weekly game dev show and gives away a copy of their code editor, which is JetBrains Writer. This is different though. This is not Writer. This is not a code editor. This is actually a scene view tool that you can use in the editor to just make the editor life experience a little bit better. And I say a little bit. So far, I've been using it for the last week or so since I've been back from GDC. It's quite a bit better. I really love it. And I think that you're going to love it as well. So let's get started with the features. After you import the Writer Flow package, you should see a Writer Flow menu appear, assuming that your compilation works. You see a couple of the options available there, like Search Anywhere, which is a really neat feature. Let's just dive into that one first. Control Alt N allows me to search anywhere in my scene and go find something like my creature that I want to roam around. Let's see if I can spell creatures right. Creature, there we go. A character creature. And then I can click and drag and actually pull that character, if I grab the prefab one, right out here into my scene. So now I've got another character in my scene. My character is in the root of my hierarchy, and you might notice something else going on in the hierarchy, probably the most visible part, and that's this grouping system or sections that they've added. If I want to add this creature to a section, I can right click and then go down and choose create section. That'll allow me to create a brand new section, choose a color, and give it a name like new creatures. Maybe I'll just call this creatures. This would be all of my creatures. Now there is one thing that I've noticed with this creating a section system that I prefer to change the workflow around because of. And that's that the offset here is going to be the position or the position of this object here is going to be the position of the child when I created it. And generally I prefer to have my parent or my group objects to be zeroed out on their position, not centered or around one object. So my preferred method is to just take the object out and then either right click and reset this transform and drag it in or just create an empty section and then add the objects afterwards instead of adding them into or right clicking with them selected and having it kind of center them out. Now there was a question that a lot of people asked when I was looking at this about whether or not this creates an object or if it's like some other thing, if it's doing some extra work to not modify the transform. And as far as I can tell, it does look like it just creates an empty game object and adds some nice, fancy, pretty highlights. You might also notice something else in this hierarchy though. There's a star here and a little note edit pin mark. The pin is for adding in special notes. So I've got a note on this creature that he is player controllable. See, this is char char character creature. So this is a character that's controllable by the player. And I added a note so I could remember that that's what that was. And there's also these little stars. And these stars show up in this writer toolbar. You can see it right here. It's been floating around the whole time. Anything that I mark with a star will appear as a shortcut here. So now when I click on that star, I can go through and find my couple different objects that I had needed to find regularly and didn't want to have to go searching through here. To add something to that, like say I want my gate one, uh, let's go find something interesting. Let's go find the big gate. No, that's kind of a boring one. Let's find maybe this random hall part. So a random hall part out in the middle of nowhere. Let's go see where that one is. I go select it and now I've got this hall part as a as a shortcut or something that I can get to. So if I was working on this section, I could work on it and then jump back over to my creature or whatever other thing that I needed. And this so far has been the most useful thing that I've used. Sections are cool, the searching is cool. This thing I use nonstop to just go mark an object I'm working on and then be able to find it. And then if I want to unmark it, I just uncheck it and it removes. It's the simplest, easiest little workflow there. The other thing that you'll notice in here is a camera selection. So here I've got an outside view set up and a door view set up. The door view is showing this door where I'm doing a little bit of work testing out art and testing out character interactions and other things. The outside view just shows me kind of a top-down view of my space station. To add these, all you do is move your camera around in the scene view. So I go like, hey, I want to look at the entire hangar. Go over to this part of the hangar, hit the plus, 
choose create a camera preset and I've created it. Now, when I did that, it actually had a name field here. So when I created it, I created it with name camera preset. Let's rename it by clicking the edit and just call this like hanger overview and then hit finish. So now I've got a hanger overview, I've got a door view and outside and I can just bounce around. This is super fast and, and quick. The searching for objects, slightly slower, not quite as quick, but it is still fast and, and super handy. So either one of these, definitely worth worthwhile and worth using alone, I think. This allows you to search for objects that are in the scene. So if I wanna go search for something like my robot, it will find the robot assets that are in the scene but it doesn't find the actual instances of them, it's finding the project references to them. So I can click and just drag out maybe another robot or maybe I wanna take the model for the robot and just drop that out instead. I'm gonna delete both of those though and let's go take a look at a couple more things. One of the most useful things that I think a lot of people like is the ability to replace objects. So say you've placed out a bunch of things, maybe a bunch of these creatures, and you're like, oh no, these aren't supposed to be the character creatures. These are supposed to be the wandering creatures or something else. I can right click on them and choose replace with. I can go find the object that I want to use. Let's go find my roaming creature. Didn't I make one that was capturable? There we go, a capturable creature. And then I can expand out the options here and actually choose what I want to do. I can keep the name, keep the tags, the layers, the parents, positions, rotations, preserve the nav mesh stuff and all the other stuff, or I can unpack the prefab if I want. I'm just gonna hit replace and let's watch it change. So now you see that this object, which is now rescaled because I replaced it with a giant one, is now replaced with my tiny little, or my normal capturable object. I've still got a little bit of work to do on my prefab, but it's got my roamer script, my give item interaction, and everything else instead of being a player. In fact, now that I said that, why don't we try just converting him into a player as well? So I'll right click on the, let's do it from the scene view this time, and choose the replace option, replace. I think it's easier if you just right click on the, the character there, but I'm gonna go the, the longer route, search for my brain bot. There we go, my character brain bot and choose replace. And now I've got two playable characters. Obviously I think this is more useful for things like props, world stuff, trees and all that, but I don't have a lot of those replaceable things in the scene that I've got open. So I figured I'd just go with the characters and objects that I might actually replace right now. So let's continue on and take a look at the last couple really cool things in Rider Flow. One of the things that you might have noticed when you're using Unity is that the default like code viewer is just terrible. Like being able to view code if I wanted to say I go to my project view and I go look at maybe my inventory script and I click on it. You see that I've got this terrible looking little view. I can loosely kind of see stuff, but it didn't take me way longer to figure stuff out if I want to use that. What I can do now with Rider Flow is choose open code editor and get this nice, let's see if it if it works. Ah, it's doing a quick update. Once it's done updating the first time around, I get this nice formatted little code editor. And then I can see this in Unity. I can just type in here, start working in it. It doesn't have all of the features of Rider, but it does have all of the nice formatting and allows me to change things and just save my files so that I don't have to jump over to the editor again. If you're using a code editor, I highly recommend JetBrains Rider. Freaking awesome, I love it and wouldn't use anything else. But if you just wanna do some quick code editing, I think that this is a great way to go. Nice way to see the code too without having to jump over or open up the project in Writer or your code editor every time you wanna go look at a simple little script. I think there are a couple other features that I haven't figured out yet in here. If you know what they are, please drop them down below. If there's something else cool that you think that they should add, add that as a comment as well. I wanna reach out to the writer team and just give them as much feedback as possible, or maybe you can just contact them directly. I know that they were very responsive at GDC to ideas and suggestions. My buddy Michael Wolf had tons of great ideas and they seem to, to really love them. So I would say if you've got ideas, drop them in the comments, send them over to JetBrains, let them know. Definitely go download Rider Flow. I'll make sure the link is right down there in the description below or you can search for Rider Flow. It's pretty easy to find. And uh, make sure that you like, subscribe, share. Let me know if this was helpful or useful at all. And if you're curious about the code here or any of the course stuff, um, there will be links down below for that. Oh, and don't forget to check out GameDevGuild.com, online game dev conference for Unity developers. We'll be talking about all kinds of useful things like this and a lot more. All right, see you later.